Brutus was the man who killed the iconic figure of Rome on that time in front of Senate. But why he killed him, and what was the reason that turned the whole Senate against him? Yes, we are talking about the great Julius Caesar. Hello, and welcome to our new video. Today we are going to talk about life, victories, and assassination of Caesar. Before that, if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Gaius Julius Caesar was born into a patrician family on 12th July, 100th BC. The family claimed to have immigrated to Rome from Alba Longa during the 7th century BC. His father's name was also Gaius Julius Caesar, and he was a Roman senator, a supporter of his brother-in-law, Gaius Marius. His mother's name was Aurelia, and she was a daughter of Rutilia and Lucius Aurelius Cotta. He received a comprehensive education, as was common for boys of his social status. He studied rhetoric, literature, and philosophy, displaying remarkable intelligence and an excellent memory. His education provided a strong foundation for his future political and military career, as it allowed him to become a skilled orator and writer. Julius Caesar's father, Gaius Julius Caesar, died when Julius Caesar was around 16 years old. The Julius Caesar assumed the role of the head of the family after his father's death. Julius Caesar's first marriage was to Cornelia, the daughter of Lucius Cornelius Cinna, a prominent Roman statesman. After Sulla's victory in the Civil War, 82 BC, he cancelled many of Cinna's decisions, including Caesar's marriage. Sulla told Caesar to end his marriage with Cinna's daughter, but Caesar refused, which made Sulla angry. It's said that Sulla might have wanted to have Caesar killed, but Caesar went into hiding. He then left Italy to work for a governor of Asia, Marcus Minucius Thermus. While there, he travelled to Bithynia to collect naval reinforcements and stayed some time as a guest of the king Nicomedes IV. He then served at the siege of Mytilene, where he won the civic crown for saving the life of a fellow citizen in battle. The civic crown was a military decoration during the Roman Republic. It took the form of a chaplet of common oak leaves woven to form a crown. Now let's back to the story. When he heard that Sulla had died, he returned to Rome, wanting to get into politics. He tried to bring some rich and powerful people to trial, but he wasn't successful. After these oratorical attempts, Caesar left Rome for Rhodes, seeking the tutelage of the rhetorician Apollonius Milon. While travelling, he was intercepted and ransomed by pirates. According to Plutarch and Suetonius, he was freed after paying a ransom of 50 talents and responded by returning with a fleet to capture and execute the pirates. In 73 BC, Julius Caesar was appointed as a member of a prestigious group called the Pontifices, replacing Gaius Aurelius Cotta. This move showed that he was well-liked by the upper class and had a promising future in politics. Shortly after, Caesar returned to Rome and was elected as one of the military tribunes for 71 BC. Although there's no proof that Caesar fought in any wars during this time, he did support some changes in the law, like lifting some restrictions placed by Sulla and pardoning those who supported a revolt led by Lepidus. In the following year, Pompey and Crassus, two influential figures, became consuls and passed laws to restore certain rights. Caesar, supporting these changes, Caesar's next step was to become a quaestor in 69 BC, and he was assigned to serve under Gaius Antistius Vetus in Hispania Ulteria. Before leaving, Caesar faced personal tragedies his aunt, Julia, the widow of Marius, and soon after, his wife Cornelia passed away. Caesar then quickly remarried, this time to Pompeia, who was Sulla's granddaughter. In 63 BC, Julius Caesar won the election to become a praetor, an important political position in ancient Rome. 
As a praetor elect, he spoke in the Senate about a group of citizens who were arrested for conspiring with Gauls against the city. Caesar suggested a compromise, either imprison the conspirators for life without a trial or keep them in custody until a trial could take place. Initially, the Senate leaned towards Caesar's idea, but later, influenced by Cato, they decided on execution instead. After his praetorship, Caesar was appointed to govern Hispania Ulterior. Struggling with debts from previous campaigns, he sought military victories to pay them off. In 59 BC, Julius Caesar decided to run for the consulship in Rome, a very important political position. Caesar's stance on promoting reconciliation after the recent civil war was well liked by people from all walks of life. With the backing of Crassus, who supported Caesar's joint ticket with a man named Lucius Lucaeus, Caesar emerged victorious in the election. However, his running mate Lucaeus did not win. Instead, the voters chose Marcus Calpurnius Bibulus, who happened to be one of Caesar's longtime personal and political rivals. After winning the consulship in 59 BC, Julius Caesar worked to form a powerful alliance known as the First Triumvirate, with political foes Pompey and Crassus. This alliance aimed to achieve Pompey's eastern settlement and help Crassus's clients involved in tax farming in Asia. They all sought land grants, especially Pompey for his veterans. Caesar's first move as consul was to make the Senate more accountable by publishing its minutes. He proposed a bill to buy land from willing sellers to distribute to Pompey's veterans and the urban poor. Caesar also passed bills to reduce tax farmers' debts for Crassus and ratify Pompey's eastern settlements. He extended his land distribution bill to Campania. Pompey solidified the alliance by marrying Caesar's daughter Julia. In 58 BC, Gaul faced instability with tribal conflicts and Roman involvement. Caesar intervened against migrating Helvetii and later aided Gallic tribes against Ariovistus. Wintering in Gaul, he faced an uprising, ultimately subduing most of Gaul by 51 BC. To enhance his military reputation, Caesar engaged Germans, built a bridge across the Rhine, and ventured into Britain in 55 and 54 BC. In Rome, political tensions arose. The triumvirs sought Publius Clodius Pulcher's support, who in 58 BC sent Cicero into exile. Clodius later opposed Pompey, disrupting his arrangements. Caesar and Pompey backed Cicero's return, easing tensions temporarily. In 57 BC, the triumvir's relations soured. Political maneuvering ensued, leading to renewed alliances in 56 BC. In 55 BC, Pompey and Crassus secured commands, extending Caesar's rule. Political opposition persisted, but Caesar's legislation passed, addressing provincial corruption. In 54 BC, Julia's death didn't strain Caesar's alliance with Pompey. As civil war loomed in 50 BC, tensions heightened. The Senate proposed disarmament, but it failed. In 49 BC, Caesar crossed the Rubicon, initiating the civil war. He pursued Pompey, defeating him at Pharsalus in 48 BC. Caesar arbitrated the Egyptian civil war, engaging in an affair with Cleopatra. Returning to Rome, he faced challenges in Spain and Africa. Caesar emerged victorious, defeating Metellus Scipio and Cato. In 45 BC, he faced opposition in Spain, winning at Munda. In January 44 BC, there was an attempt to call Caesar Rex, king, but two tribunes stopped it. Caesar got upset, removed the tribunes from office, and expelled them from the Senate. This angered the public as they still respected the tribunes as defenders of their freedom. Shortly before February 15, 44 BC, Caesar declared himself dictator for life. After becoming dictator for life, Caesar publicly rejected a crown offered by Antony during Lupercalia celebrations. Around February 44 BC, about 60 conspirators, including both former Pompeians and Caesareans, joined. 
Leaders included Gaius Trebonius, Decimus Brutus, Cassius, and Brutus, claiming descent from those who ousted kings and freed Rome from tyranny, became the main leader. Public sentiment turned against Caesar around late autumn 45 BC. The conspirators chose March 15th, Ides of March, for the assassination, three days before Caesar's planned Parthian campaign. Some reports suggest Caesar was warned, but he refused precautions. On the Ides of March, conspirators, including Brutus, attacked Caesar with daggers at a Senate meeting. Caesar suffered multiple wounds and died. The assassination triggered chaos and eventually led to a series of civil wars.